Gabby Petito never goes outside. Hey guys, it's A. Paul and welcome back to my channel. I have got my bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a minor in psychology and I want to say that for the next 97 videos because I am just so proud of myself. I am also a board member for the Voices for the Silence nonprofit. Our nonprofit focuses on missing person cases, mostly in West Virginia. So I'll link the Facebook group below in case you want to join. And today we are here with another update video on Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. When I covered this, this was actually a very active case still. Yes, we knew most likely what happened, but the evidence and just information was still ongoing whenever I got done covering it. For anybody that doesn't know who Gabby and Brian are, they were a couple that made major headlines in 2021. Gabby was making a YouTube channel on their van life and was able to upload at least one video before well, everything happened. They were taking a road trip cross country in their van over more towards like the west side. And they had some definite issues during this trip. And in fact, Brian was the only one that showed up home with Gabby's van. And while Gabby's mom, Nicole, was trying to reach Brian's mom, Roberta, all contact ended up being blocked and there was no way to get a hold of them. So on September 12th, 2021, Gabby was reported missing thanks to the FBI because this was a more than one state case. We had no idea where Gabby was over this cross-country road trip. And the FBI worked with state local city police of these areas and really just tried to find Gabby and they focused a lot of their time on the Grand Teton National Park and during the search for Abby Brian's family reports him missing so now there's also a search going on in the Carlton Reserve in Florida for Brian Laundry that cost 1.2 million dollars. And if we're just being honest, Brian was always the main suspect in this case. He refused to talk to anybody about it. He just wouldn't tell anybody where she was, what happened to her, wouldn't let his family talk, nothing. Gabby was found about a week after Brian was reported missing in the Grand Teton National Park. There was a traveling YouTube channel that actually caught their van on some of their footage through this Grand Teton National Park. So the police really kind of honed in on that area and started searching. And without this travel YouTube channel, we would have never had any idea where to truly start searching for Gabby because this was where she was found. And the autopsy concluded that she died from blunt force trauma to the head and strangulation. Brian became the main suspect in all of this because they had just gotten a domestic violence call on them in Moab. Grant County Sheriff's Office. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower, and we're driving by, and I'd like to report a domestic dispute to Florida with a white van. Florida license plate, white land, gentleman, Where's about five, six beard. They just drove off. They're going down Main Street. And what were they doing? Cooperative, but um, what do you say? What were they doing? Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. Okay, you said um, it's a white van? What kind of white van? Like a big one? Um, it, it was a smaller van. White Ford Transit. White Ford Transit. All right, I will let somebody know. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Bye. Thanks. And after searching the Carlton Reserve for over a month and spending $1.2 million, they could not find Brian, so they decided to reopen the National Park to everyone again. And coincidentally enough, that's when Brian's family called the police and said, we would like to join the search at the Carlton Reserve. And I'm not kidding you, it took them 20 minutes to find Brian's remains. And if that's not sketchy, I don't know what is. And it did seem like he had died quite a while ago. I mean, his body was already being eaten by animals and 
yeah, it, it, it was rough. His bones had animal marks all on them. But when asked why they spent $1.2 million for search experts and over a month looking for him and couldn't find him, but his parents found him in 20 minutes? They claimed that Brian was underwater most of this time. But how could he be underwater, yet land animals are chewing on his bones? A lot of this just does not make sense. And I don't know if the police were just negligent. I mean, that's possible, right? Or what's going on? But it's weird. The whole thing's weird. Well, on the Brian side, let me put it that way. And also nowhere in the police work of the searches does it say that his parents were ever there. They also don't have in there that his dad was the one that found him. And that's just like a massive detail to leave out. Why leave that out? So to get into the scene of where Brian Brian was found, there evidently was three main areas. Scene one was his body. Scene two, they found a pile of like animal bones and a half written letter, but there's no explanation on why this letter was half written and not finished. There was also a Moab coffee roaster's hat. And then scene three, there really wasn't specific on what was in this area, but it might have been like more belongings or something like that, like a campground, whatever. And some of the photos in this crime scene have been completely redacted. And that's a lot of the reason we don't know what happened at scene three, especially because they've never made it seem like it was gruesome, gruesome. He was believed to have killed himself from a shot in the head. So all the things that were found with Brian was a dry bag and the dry bag had a journal, a wooden box with a separate small notebook in it, a photo of himself, other pictures of like his family, but I'm almost positive there was none of Gabby, a pair of green shorts and a belt, two slip-on shoes, a backpack that was never really specified what was in it, a white metal ring, a snub nose revolver, which he, you know, of course himself with a flare gun and a tent so just like an outdoorsy bag we all know that he was very into camping nature all of that so there's some really weird things in there like why do you need so many things to write things down on um and also why are you keeping pictures of yourself but not your fiance? I don't know. On October 26, 2021, that there was actually no medical issues with Brian Laundry. There was no drugs or alcohol, anything like that in his system. And that he 100% had killed himself with a shotgun to the head. The trajectory of this bullet would have been really hard because he would have had to shoot it with his non-dominant hand, yet hold it like on the opposite side in the back. So he would have like, like had to wrap his hand around like that. And it just didn't seem like he would have done it himself. It seemed like it would have been really hard because you would have either, because you would either had to wrap your hand all the way around or go like, the, I don't know. It doesn't work, you know? So people have thought that maybe someone shot him instead. That would explain the half written notebook and all of that. Like, why was this letter half written? Maybe this is what interrupted him. Why did he have photos of just himself at his campground? You know, like things like that. So let's talk about the notebook that was found. In the final report of the investigation, they absolutely claim that Brian Laundrie admitted in this notebook that he was the sole reason of Gabby's death. He claimed complete responsibility and the FBI also released that in fact he had talked about in this notebook using Gabby's phone to try to throw off police or her family where they were, how long she was alive and all of that. Because if you remember in the first video that her mom kept saying she was texting these things that just didn't really sound like her and like referring to her grandpa by his first name and things like that. He was even texting his own phone from Gabby's phone. So on March 11th, 2022, it is announced that Gabby's family has decided to sue the laundries. That on August 28th, 2021, that he had in fact told his family what he did to Gabby, that they knew she was no longer alive and that they held that information from Gabby's family. And they say because on this day, they get a call from Brian Laundry, and then their phone records show 
know that they immediately call and hire a lawyer just out of nowhere. Two or three days before your son comes home with his fiance's van that you guys live in without her. And they state because of this that his family had to help him cover up this murder and held information from the police and Gabby's family, which means the statement that they released through their lawyer, which pretty much just stated that they were feeling very badly for Gabby's family and that they're hoping for her safe return, is actually a bullface lie. They knew she wasn't coming home, and therefore it could be ruled as cruel and unusual. Also, they watched the mental suffering of Gabby's family trying to find her. They watched this all go down and did nothing. You have to watch my first video to understand how little this family did. And the laundry's defense was, well, that was our lawyer that made that statement. We did not make that statement ourselves. But the judge, of course, put them in their place and said, doesn't your lawyer speak for you? Isn't that his literal job? And there was also claims that they were trying to help Brian Laundry flee the country. And Gabby's family seeks a hundred thousand dollars in damages for causing Gabby's family absolute pain and suffering. And Brian's family, of course, just said this is baseless and frivolous and we will see what happens with that. And the Florida judge completely denied the motion to dismiss this case. And at the beginning of this, the laundries weren't even showing up to court. It was just their lawyers. They were nowhere to be seen. And that's not the only lawsuit that Gammy's family decided to file. On August 8th, 2022, they also filed one against the Moab Police Department. If you don't remember that absolute horrible interaction that Gabby and Brian had with the Moab Police Department where they just deemed Gabby in a mental episode instead of seeing the abuse as what it was. I have clips of it in my last video, so again, just go watch that one if you haven't. And Gabby's family absolutely accused the Moab City Police Department of neglect. Like, how could... If you go watch that body cam footage, it is absolute neglect. I'm sorry. Because according to these 911 calls, there was never mention of Gabby hitting Brian. And when the police stopped them and talked to them, they blamed everything on Gabby and told her she was the aggressor. They also accused them of wrongful death because it is very possible that if they would have actually done something with that situation, Gabby would be alive today, which proves that they were absolutely neglectful. And also part of this lawsuit is when the Moab police released that they investigated this and that these officers made unintentional mistakes and that nothing would be happening to them. Now, what all was said in this notebook? That was like the burning question. What did he say? Like, yeah, he admitted guilt. He said it was all him. But what exactly happened? We still had no idea. And I'm telling you right now, I'm just going to throw my opinion out there and take it with a grain of salt. But this man wrote this notebook for someone else to find it. He's specifically saying things that hint towards he's expecting there to be a reader. So I have a hard time believing a lot of what's in this because he's expecting someone else to find it. You know, you're going to paint yourself as a good guy in that case. The laundry lawyer, Steve Bertolino, went ahead and just released the images of the notebook on June 24th, 2022. And in this notebook, he talks a lot about how much he's in love with Gabby. And he talked about how much his family loved Gabby and that he really wanted people to leave them alone. So there's the first hint. He's asking people to leave them alone in this notebook. His story in this notebook was that they were rushing back to the van and they were passing this creek and Gabby slipped and she was screaming. And when Brian ran back to find her, she was breathing really heavy and like trying to gasp for air and the temperature dropped and she was soaking wet and he carried her for as far as he could. And they were only about like five minutes from the van, but he really couldn't continue. So he tried to build a fire, which I mean, is probably just as much work, if not harder, 
van carrying Gabby back to the van. So then he like spooned her close to him by the fire trying to keep her warm and he was trying to like paint the picture that she was freezing to death you know like violently shaking screaming in pain so he decided to end her life for mercy for not her not to be in pain anymore and i'm just going to say right now is we've all seen the pictures of where she was found and where the van was and first of all that wasn't five minutes that was like 30 seconds i mean maybe 20 feet 30 feet like not that far right so you couldn't make it that much farther so you decide to spend more energy by building a fire that's a lot more energy than carrying your girlfriend to the van for 30 more seconds i'm sorry that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard so then he says he came home to spend the last little bit of his life with his family. He said, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful, that it was what she wanted. But I see now that all the mistakes I made, I panicked, I was in shock. But from the moment I decided, took away her pain, I knew I couldn't go on without her. And so then he hints that's why he killed himself, was because he could not live without Gabby. Then don't kill her. Like, pick her up and get in the van 30 seconds away. But again, like how can we really trust this? He made himself the complete martyr in this situation that he did the absolute right thing by taking Gabby's pain away. This makes me so angry. This notebook sends my blood pressure through the roof. Just like what a, you know, like what a, And some just final things I want to mention is that Gabby's family wants absolutely everything public. They are a-okay with letting everything out, even if it's not the best side of Gabby. They are very passionate in helping other people buy Gabby's story. But that is all I have for the Gabby Petito Brian Laundry update. Thank you guys so much for watching and please like and subscribe for me and hit that notification button. That way you're notified the next time I upload. I also want to remind you all that I do have a GoFundMe for Crystal Young for her mom to get a PI to look into her case. If you haven't, please go watch her video to figure out why in the world this is so important. And then on top of that, I still have stickers for sale from my Unsolved in West Virginia series in 2021. They are $2 each and all proceeds go to the Cold Case Foundation, so it's going for a good cause. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!